If you look closely at a regular TV picture, you see it's made up of a series of lines. The lines in a high-definition picture are less noticeable because there are twice as many of them. By comparison, regular TV looks crude and fuzzy. Crude and fuzzy are nicknames. Uh, poor old regular TV can't hold a candle to high-definition TV, according to that American News report. But this is something to remember. That story was shot in 1988 at the Seoul Olympics, nearly 10 years ago now. So what happened to the brave new world of TV, and why are people once again talking about a TV revolution? The answers in this week's High Tech column. Joining me now is one of our High Tech regulars, Tim Doyle. Tim, you know, back in 1988 when I heard about HDTV, I I said, well, I'll hold off on buying a new television for now, and I'm still waiting, Tim. What's going on? What happened to HDTV? Well, it's amazing that it got off the ground at all, because, in fact, basically, computer manufacturers, television manufacturers, and a whole variety of other different content providers had to work together to somehow bring it to the, bring it to the fore also set against a backdrop of industrial comp competition between Japan and the United States. So, so what happened? Did all these interests just implode? B well, essentially, we just, they got off their duff, and after 10 years, they finally, it just happened tectonically, and we finally got around to doing it. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, uh, in December of last year, finally set a timetable of 2006 for the eventual transition to digital TV. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're working on that timetable. But this is not HD TV we're talking about now. Now we're talking about something called digital television. What's the difference? Right, yeah, let's explain the, the, trend, the distinction. HD TV is high definition television. It's slightly different than digital television. Uh, it's exactly as it sounds. It's resolution of a thousand lines, a thousand eighty lines per screen, mm -hmm. about twice of current televisions. Um, and it's a different kind of, of, of size. It's a rectangular format. It kind of a 16 Looks by like 9 a movie screen. Right, a letterbox sort of look rather than the square of today, um, as you can see on your screen right there. Um, now, digital television is a little bit bigger and more profound. It's the transmission of digital data over the, through television signals using binary code, the ones and zeros of computer language. So, okay, so yeah. HDTV was using the analog signal that people are watching us on right now. Right, the but very digital television things. uses a whole different signal. Absolutely. Who's broadcasting in the digital signal now? There are only a few test stations up right now in the United States, uh, the rally in North Carolina, Washington, D.C. Uh, they're just starting to get it off the ground, as I said, a timetable deadline of 2006. Um, but the thing about this that's so um, important, it's bigger than HGTV now, it's digital television, and that allows us to bring in computer data into our screens and turn televisions from something just a, a dead old box in the corner to a, a sort of a, a, a wonderful new device. So an, an, another idea that we heard a lot about in the 1980s, interactive television will probably be more of a reality with digital TV. Right, with a caveat though. This will you will be able to receive far more data and computer-like data now um, at very high speeds, 19 megabytes a second. So mm -hmm. you can receive like eight newspapers in 60 seconds. Hmm. But it's only one way. So it's not like the internet. You can't sort of request things in the same way. They may figure out ways to, to finesse that, but right now it's only one way. But are, are you talking about broadcasting? I use the word broadcasting, but are we talking about broadcasting or cable casting? It seems that with television, cable delivery seems to be the way of the future. And also now with internet service available on cable as well. But you're actually talking about you know, using the old transmission towers, aren't you? Well, exactly. Digital television is absolutely revolutionary. No longer do you need a cable connection. It comes straight through the air, through a uh, terrestrial broadcast, as it's called. Mm -hmm. So you receive that high amount of data straight into your receiver. And interestingly enough, you don't receive a fuzzy picture. You either receive a picture or you don't. So <laughs> okay. it's perfectly clear or not. Good, I guess. Um, now, and what about the, now, you, you mentioned the letterbox shape of HDTV, which to me was one of, one of the appeals of, of, that, of that medium. Will that be available in, in digital television as well? It will, exactly. Digital television is sort of the umbrella under which HDTV sits. Uh, but what will happen in the transition toward digital television is some programs will use that letterbox format and others will just revert to the same old square type thing. Yeah. Um, there will not be an absolute 100% broadcast of uh, DTV when it first gets rolling. Sure, and, and uh, it, it will be, we, we won't all own the devices either. How, how much right. do you expect we'll pay for, a, for our own digital television set at home, Tim? They plan on being introduced in the United States next year for about $2,000 US or even higher. But mm -hmm. because it's such a mass market device, prices will plummet. Canada's timetable for getting all this, and which decides when we get to see it, is a little bit behind the states, behind 2006. Right. There's a task force on implementation of DTV that's agreed to the technical standards, but uh, we're still going to be a little bit behind the United States to get it through. Are any of our broadcasters, though, looking at that right now? I mean, here at the CBC, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about digital radio. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, this is a tremendously flexible and, and fascinating medium. I mean, this is going to, everyone is going to be broadcasting in this. There will be, this will bring everyone along. It's going to be an absolute revolution. Who stands to win and who stands to lose? Well, winners are anyone who makes technology, televisions and things like that. Television manufacturers, computer manufacturers, 
content, people who create content for this will also win out, and of course, viewers. Losers, two things. Uh, potentially cable, because as I said, it comes through the air, so right. they'll have to figure themselves out. Well, that's a new idea. Everyone was saying that cables, with, with, you know, with the, the, the possibility of internet uh, services, is, is going to be a big industry. There right. In it's future. not as though this is going to make that extinct. It's just right. that they're going to have to figure out new ways, because remember, they want, we want interactivity as well, so they may right. be able to bring us that. Okay, so and, cable and... And finally, it's Canadian cultural sovereignty, basically, because mm. If the United States gets going on this first, and this is something the task force is trying to figure out, right. they can broadcast from the border and we can receive without any kind of interruption um, from Canadian cable huh. providers. Okay, that. so well, the Death Star debate comes back. Absolutely. So 2500 bucks, you think, for TV? Right, but it'll come right down to the basement very soon. If, if it's any more than that, Tim, I'll get people to, to, to write to you and you can make up the shortfall, okay? I'll try. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us today. Thank you so much, okay. Brent. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.